The United States of America is the most successful nation the world has ever known. I think that's largely because we're the freest nation. Humans cannot reach their potential, cannot realize their dreams unless they're free. If prosperity were easy, everybody around the world would be prosperous. If freedom were easy, everybody around the world would be free. If security were easy, everybody around the world would be secure. They are not. None of this is going to be easy. But this is the United States of America. It takes an extraordinary effort. It takes extraordinary commitment. It takes extraordinary strength. The Valley Forge wasn't easy. Going to the moon wasn't easy. Settling the West wasn't easy. We are the American people. We have seen difficulties before and we always overcome them. This is about rolling up our sleeves. We might have some differences, but at Americans putting our head down and getting it done. We are here. We are back. We are the best in the business. And I'm not afraid to toot my horn on that. Welcome to the Wayne Dupree Podcast, along with the Godfather of Consider of Radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. Hello, Red Voice Media. Hello, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to be here. Our Wednesday, your Wednesday. And Mr. JR, Mr. Junior, JR Robinson, he's Growing, well, actually, he's losing hair on one side. Yeah, God, I'm I'm getting old, Wayne. Getting old, <laughs> getting the shiner up there. Who knew, right? <laughs> Happy hump day, everybody. We made it through half the week. Yes, we're ha- halfway through the week. Uh, there's a GOP debate tonight. <laughs> President Trump is supposed to be um, in Michigan. Well, we got a judge yeah. problem, don't we? We got to talk. Oh about my it. God. We got to talk about it's it. It's out of control. And I'll tell you, you know, I, I read something a couple of weeks ago that, that laid it out. Uh, it was, it was testimony by Jim Clapper. And one of the intelligence community's main missions, this is going to sting folks, but it's true. They target federal judges. Hmm. They target federal, all of them, federal judges, and they put surveillance on them. Mm. And nine times out of 10, they find something and they exploit them with it. That's why you have these ridiculous rulings by Trump appointed judges. Right. Uh, This is that that's a misnomer. Right. I think we should eliminate every single one of them and start over. It's that it's that bad. I mean, they're going to they're going to litigate this guy right out of his money, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they are going to make it so that he is not even. That that he's low on the millionaires list, not even you know, uh, but the ruling that came down from New York, and yeah, yeah, I am going. You know, it's 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 one thing, and I want you to go along with us for this, okay? Um, we're broadcasting on Red Voice Media Network. Um, we're here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Thursday from twelve to one thirty p.m. Make sure that you check out their website, redvoicemedia.com. Um, thanks, thank, thank you for those that are signing up for their premium. You just use the code name Wayne for extras. There's a whole lot of extra stuff that's going on there. Your uh, mm-hmm. purchases um, help, huh? Let's see, oh, your purchases help um, the network continue to grow, and um, um, what um, Drew and those guys are doing over there. It's remarkable, and, you know, we want to thank – you can watch us on Apple TV. You can watch us um, on Amazon Fire Stick. You can watch us on um, streaming networks. 
uh, just type in Wayne, um, Wayne Dupree. Um, well, one day, um, type in uh, Red Voice Media. But um, if there's some, if there's something that the conservative media has always been bad about, and probably, hmm, probably legacy media too, is when there are people. Well, no, 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 because Menendez is out there. Um, when something goes wrong on our side, most of our conservative media, they don't touch it. They don't touch it. They don't talk about it. They don't defend it. They don't attack it. They don't touch it. When it's something good, then they're all over it. Um, what Hutch just said just a while ago, a lot of the main, I mean, a lot of the conservative media websites should have led with that this morning. They, they did. They did. Uh, now, for your Never Trumper uh, websites, you probably led with it in their way of bashing. Uh, how could you possibly Trump. elect a felon, a convicted exactly, felon? Right. right. Uh, I and, say and, and, yeah, go ahead. This ruling, and this is saying a lot, folks. This whole case and this ruling is probably the most egregious one I've seen against President Trump. Hyper now notice, inside. yeah, exactly. And and notice, we we aren't lawyers, we aren't uh, in the legal side, but this is how we feel. This is a feel. This is an emotional feeling because when I looked at the thing last night, I didn't even send a message to these two. I just shook my head. And I was like, man, this is this is worse than death, to tell you the truth. This is worse than death. Because when you're allowed to live, to watch them, see them do this, to all the years of building all this stuff up and everything, and they're basically just, they are literally tearing him down to the bitter morsel, man. This is, what is it? Death there's, no, there's no due process. This yeah, is I was just a say. judge saying it. There's no trial. There's yeah. no jury. There's no no but no victims. He paid every single nickel back that he borrowed. I mean, this is complete garbage, and yeah. it, it's it's not going to stand up in court. And if it does, then you know, really we get couple, to court. We got really a couple get to court. Well, I was yeah. going to say let's let's break down what this ruling was. Letitia Jones files a civil suit against the. Uh, Trump and his businesses. There a was city no attorney general, a city district attorney. I mean, right. There was no complaints by any of the lenders, insurers, or whatnot. They get to court. The judge says you can't have a jury trial and you can't present evidence. And the evidence you try to do at the end, he finds his lawyer 7,500 bucks a piece for trying to contest. He says, I get to decide. And then he decides that President Trump overstated the value of these properties to get his loans. Keep in mind, they were vetted by the banks and the financial institutions. And Forbes. And Forbes. And they didn't complain. And the judge determined the county tax assessor's valuation of $18 million was accurate. Meanwhile, the real value, like go on Zillow. This is a 40 acre with double ocean exposure property things, property that's less than an acre or a, or a third of an acre are selling for $40 million. So he says, this is worth 18 million bucks. You said it was worth 400 million bucks. Therefore you violate a lot. Like you Hutch said, think, you paid the loans. Nobody yeah. complained. There was no issues. You would it's, think that from a presidential standpoint that bumps up the property from, from, um, from the, the 18 million to more than that. But, you, but um, y'all were talking about the, uh, the, the, um, well, you kind of brought it up. Um, the exaggeration of his finances. I was looking at a lawyer show this morning suits. I've been, um, it's a good I've show. Been, uh, yeah, yeah, real good show. I've been binge watching it for the fifth time. And uh, something came up about uh, 
companies overvaluing who they are. And I don't know. I don't know if this was God or not, but one of the lawyers said, oh, they've been doing that since the um, beginning of time. So companies do that. Companies overvalue themselves to banks. They do to get larger loans. So do people. But, right. I mean, and, and right now, I'm, I, I mean, but here's the thing. He didn't do that. And Forbes magazine quoted the worth as $350 million. I saw that in an article. I read about this today. Yeah. Showed but, the article. Right. They now. The, okay. But I, I'm just saying, you know, they do these things. You know, and yeah, that's how real estate works. I yeah, mean, yeah. banks know you that. never sell you yeah. never sell something for something less than you bought it for. Right. But if you look at that ruling, that's what they're getting him for is overvaluing when other companies do the same thing. Yeah, when other they, when other billionaires do the same thing, they they exaggerate what they are. I mean, I'm I'm sure you know how you hear oh Elon Musk is worth oh there's a yeah, but I bet you he's not liquid. Right. It's never okay. liquid. All right. It, exactly. It's never liquid. Nobody's walking around with cash. Exactly. You so, know, I, I mean, mean the, the thing that's evil about this, too, that really ticks me the hell off is he went after the whole family. Right. Every adult son, all any business partners involved. This is crazy. This is this needs to be stopped somehow. I, I mean, we're watching our country go away right in front of us in 10 different ways all at once. But like I say, too, the thing that's egregious about this isn't that like some of those ones you can say, oh, are they going to prosecute Trump? Are they going to prosecute everybody else? I mean, are they going to prosecute every New York business entity that does real estate? But this is different. Ten days. He didn't overvalue them. <laughs> I can't say that enough. The judge said this was worth $18 million. The freaking parking lot on Mar-a-Lago is worth $18 million. I mean, the whole property is worth hundreds of millions of dollars, especially now that he was president. Right. That the I see. See, I don't know about the pricing of different things. I really don't. I don't know the pricing of real estate. I can't say what anything is. I can only say what um, what. Um, well, if you look in Zillow and you look in those places, but then those places are always increased because the real estate people, the, I mean, this place that I have here was overpriced during that time. But I mean, you know, that it happens. Prices are just relative. What I'm saying about say, you, you can what I'm saying Zillow. about President Trump and and Mar-a-Lago is when I saw that it was worth, well, the judge is saying that it's worth $18 million. I'm like, but the president is staying there. I mean, that 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 escalator is worth eighteen million dollars. Yeah, that's going to be a landmark right. type of. Uh, but I mean, uh, you can landmark. look at Zillow. You, you know what I'm saying? Can see yeah, what okay. all the Historic landmark. Historic landmark. He, he was here. They're going to cordon off uh, where he did business. They're going to cordon off. It's going to become a museum. Uh, the, later the, on office, the, road. the office. The office where the uh, apprentice was, where he fired people. In New that York, elevator, right? That one. But I mean, we don't even need to go that deep, guys. Go on Zillow, look at the sale history for all the houses around that property. They're all less than an acre. There was one that sold uh, like eight years ago that was less than an acre. It was like dot seven two acres for forty million dollars. It's forty acres on Mar-a-Lago. It it's it's insane. I, I I'm I'm just. I'm just saying that when I heard that the judge said we're not even going to take this trial, right? I was like, "That's not that, it's over. That's not due process. He's that, got ten days to turn that's this not stuff due over. Process. That's yeah, not and then due he's process. got ten days to shutter his businesses and liquidate all the assets. Show who's going to be the receiver, right? It's madness, man. It's it's insane. that judge should be locked up. Well, uh, yeah, that I mean, that judge. We don't have a chance if we have a judiciary like that. Which is something that we have talked about here on the Wayne Dupree program. We're, we're like, you remember 
I asked about judges. <laughs> I yeah. asked about certain judges. I mean, not certain judges. I just asked about judges months ago because I was like, yeah, but these people can be got to, man. I mean, they are got, you know, and I mean, but I wasn't seeing all this down the, down the road. We were talking about something else with the judges, uh, something that came up and I was like, oh, I don't know. I mean, I I think I think judges can be got to, especially in this day and time. And it doesn't matter if you are a Trump judge and it doesn't matter if you are uh, a Obama judge. It doesn't matter if you are a Clinton judge. Once they get in that system, it's almost like the police thing. It's almost like that blue wall thing. I think, you know, they start. They get surveilled. You know what I'm saying? You know, they look at them and they, yeah, you don't they, think they find Jeffrey something. On, if they the don't, it, you should hear this testimony. I got to try to find it again. Mm. But Clapper's like, you know, if there's no evidence, we'll make evidence. Yeah. You know, like if there's nothing, if you're a good to go, well, then we're going to put some kitty porn on your computer. And they can do it. Oh, of course they can. And they, they do, do it. it. They can do it. Well, and think they about can. it, guys. Why have they not released the Epstein file? Because the intelligence community was involved then there was a bunch of they have a bunch of rich and powerful people that they have dirt on for leverage oh, oh they know it and, uh, well, and well, you know what Jeffrey the Epstein. One in the, right I, I and, and you know what jay i gave a reason why they won't release it because now those people are the pawns of whoever ha, is in control of all that information you yep. can i mean with the nsa and all this FBI and CIA covert stuff and everything, they know who was down there. So all so all, look, anytime they need for somebody to bend a knee or anytime they need to make somebody um, um bow or something like that, we got you. Yeah. We got you, and you're gonna do purpose. exactly what we, you know yeah. what I'm saying. It's the mafia. Um I'm the mafia government now, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, like Cash it. Patel said, it's government gangsters. Yeah, yep. yeah, right, 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 right. That's that that's why they haven't released it. Now, now we have speculated. I've seen a list out there, and you know, I've seen a list of the people that have gone down there, um, politicians and um Hollywood movie stars and um, um singers and uh, musicians, and guess what? There's a lot of people out there in front um doing big huge ass concerts and getting paid and and um, got their name up in lights and you know they're eating the fat off the calf you know but they're still out there they're they're still reaping the benefits of all the stuff that they do and children um uh, i read a story in cleveland uh last year oh, uh, around this time we were talking about 20 we were talking about 20 kids Within a, like two or three weeks, that went that went disappeared. Now it's sixty, thousand, one thousand, thousand, yeah, one thousand, in the Cleveland area or in the Ohio Cleveland area. Okay, probably find them in D.C. And you would think that the mainstream media that it will be a big ass story, but it's not mm -mm. because the FBI should have reverted back to what they were before nine eleven to get back to solving crimes like this, like they did in Atlanta when those kids were missing down there. In yeah, the, I, was there uh, I was there during that. You remember that? You yeah. remember that? Dwayne, the FBI, Dwayne the FBI Williams. went down there for that. Yeah. And now but, you ain't got nobody in Cleveland trying to figure that shit out. I got a question. And I'm. this is a serious question for you guys because I've been battling with this in my head. I only just recently started hearing about the magnanimity of this pro of this problem, the, the hugeness of this child problem. Are there that many pedophiles amongst us? Are there more than I thought? Because I always thought it was a real small amount of people I did that too. were sick like that. I did too, but I but think with the numbers of these kids, man, I mean, somebody got to be using them. I think it's a trafficking to other countries. I don't think it's the, I don't think it's the pedophilia in the basement type of thing. I heard we're the biggest customers. Yeah, well, I heard that too. If you can believe the stuff coming out of Sound of Freedom and coming out outside of that, we are the biggest consumer nation of pedophilia, kitty porn, and it's 
like not even close. It's, and then you look at the immigration and when they say U.S., what, what do they mean by U.S.? Right. You know, is this, is this immigrants coming in here doing this or is this something that has always been there? Or, I mean, I never saw it. I didn't either when I was growing up. I, Other than I, the milk cartons. Yeah. I, I, now, I remember those. Yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe, maybe that was it. We just didn't string it together. We just maybe. didn't add it all up because... We saw milk cartons. We saw signs on television, um, on telephone poles. You know, kid missing. But now it's like so many, a thousand in Ohio. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. remarkable too is that there isn't a nationwide by party. You know, both sides going. Yeah. This, like, can right. we agree? Like, kids disappearing really bad. But you, you look at these Democrats, and we can't agree. Look what they're doing to the children in schools. Right. That lives the TikTok videos. Those people are real people. Yeah. Yep. And they're Americans and they they, they probably are pedos. Yeah. That well, looks becoming very big too, the trans world and the pedos. I was going to say we've talked about it on the show, you know, that you went from gays and gay marriage to trans really quick. Real and quick. within the next 3 to 5 years, it's already starting. Minor attracted person is yeah. going to be a thing. It's going to be a protected class. It's, I was no, born. it's going to start raining. I yep. was born a minor, and I, I I want my rights too. And you know that that you know. I well, mean, that, let's Star Spangled Banner. Let's take a knee for the minor attracted children. Yep. Right. Yep. Oh, um, a big shout out to Deion Sanders. Uh, he suspended two of his uh, players for taking a knee during the um, during the national anthem. Excellent. He ought to get he ought to get on him for trash talking so bad too. He said, um, he said, uh when you're on the field, you you're on here to do business. And what you do in your own time is what you do in your own time. So, you know, that's 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 how you that's how you do that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, I saw that I saw that trash talking, but um <laughs> they got whooped this week. Yeah, they did. When they I done. found out when I found out what uh, coaches are doing now. Coaches are sending uh, material around to beat Colorado. They're sending. They're they're <laughs> literally sending. It's like an NFL thing. They are sending material and plays and stuff around to the uh, Colorado's opponents. That sounds like Bill Belichick. Colorado. That sounds like Belichick and the Steelers <laughs> taking film. Jesus. Okay. So. Um, <laughs> we we briefly talked about the um the flag uh the flag yesterday y'all kind of brought up some stuff uh it really didn't hit my heart until when i was looking at it and uh last night and i was like okay all right the this is an invasion i mean this isn't an insurrection this is an invasion by another country anytime you bring a big ass flag like that and you plant it on somebody else's soil now, now, it doesn't happen in any other country but this one. And even though they took it down, there's pictures of it being put in the ground on American soil. I'm still getting over that video you showed yesterday with all those men with military haircuts. When did you ever see that many men with the same haircut? Yeah. You know, in, in 2023, those are soldiers. And the other thing, I mean, because uh, we don't know exactly what it is yet. It's clear it's something. But there's a guy uh, that was a former a former DEA agent mm -hmm. that basically said that uh, Jer Jeffrey Prather was his name. And he, he asks, is the real plan to relax the border and let the drug cartels take over America? You know, you look at everything that's collapsing right now. I mean, cities are, are dying. These cities are literally dying. I mean, there's not going to be anything left no. in the most leftist cities that we have. And that's only the beginning because every city is leftist. Yeah, every every large city is. Every leftist. city government, put it that way. Yeah, right. Yeah. Even well, some and, of the small ones. And city these county. border numbers and the video of people coming over, everybody it's, should just be appalled. I can't, and you know what? I can, this is some, 
the, the mainstream media, these networks need to be brought before a tribunal. I'm serious. Yeah. And it has to happen soon. Yes. I, I agree mean, with you. I do. I, I, you know, there's several times I've thought about, do I want to keep doing this? Do I want to put myself out there like this in this regime? And you have to, I mean, it's a, I mean, for them to, it's, it's almost like treason not to tell the American people what's really going on in America. Why even have a mainstream media? If you're not going to tell the people what's going on in America, I ain't talking about the agenda that I ain't talking about the liberal agenda because that's out the window. There is no, there is no more liberal agenda. No, there is not. There's a communist agenda. This is a takeover. Yeah. Okay. There's a communist agenda. It, It is no more liberal agenda. They don't care about the country that they were talked about that they cared about. Democrat, they don't care about it. you. You see the fentanyl um, uh, things on the street, the fentanyl um, zombies on the street. They ain't trying to fix that. You see the homelessness no. on the street. They ain't trying to fix that. You see the missing kids and whatnot that they don't want to talk about. They ain't trying to fix that. You know what I'm saying? They aren't trying to fix this. They, they're, they're trying not. to hide what they're doing is what they're yeah. doing. And, well, they used to try to hide. And now, <clears throat> they, now they put in your face. Well, here's what's sad, too, is you've got this liberal communist groups. You've got on the right, you've got all the corporations. I mean, they're just they're just ruining America and all of us plebs, all the normies. We're the ones getting screwed like mm-hmm. they're stealing our wealth. Yeah, there's no our- there's no right and left with the corporations. Right. They got no, everybody. No. They got yeah, that's everybody. What I mean. It doesn't matter. And he's still got people down here, normal folks in your neighborhood that are like, oh, great. They went after Trump. Or, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, look, look at the chat like room. Look at these morons in the chat room. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, if people are blind that right, the, the country's being stolen from them right in front of their eyes. These people were alive during the Trump administration. They know what life was like during the Trump administration. They're lying to themselves. Yeah. Right. Is what they're doing. They are pretending that this guy is not killing us, that this group that's that's running Joe Biden. Is not taking us right down the path. I mean, like, look how many bipartisan things you just said. Child ped- ped- pedophilia, pedophilia, trafficking, you know, immigration. We can't survive no matter what party you are. You can't exactly. survive that. There you go. There you go. We, I mean, it, the corporations are looking out for themselves. Period. Yeah. The corporations are looking out for themselves. The, the look, at, look at the United Auto Workers. What a bunch of idiots. You know what? I mean the leadership. No, I don't know. Well, I, I wanna... Hold on, hold on, hold on. You no, because I was look. I was trying to look for a video of the the workers to play. They are talking crap about Trump. All well, of them. we'll see. We'll see at the rally today. All of them. They, I mean, well, and the were... workers are getting played. I mean, we talked about it on the they show. Are. But the you can't executive, be that stupid. You can't be that stupid. Executives get all this money from the government to do the EV conversion that is unsustainable. These businesses are going to go bankrupt with this EV conversion. And the workers are rightfully pissed because these executives shouldn't have signed these deals and shouldn't have got all that money. But the union, if they were looking out for them, would have said, give that money back to these executives. Let's reinvest in the company because our balance sheet is really bad right now. But instead the union is genning them up to say, let's go ask for more money, which is going to lead this company to be bankrupt. And in four years, we're going to be on the show talking about, oh, can you believe they're doing an auto auto bailout? Like they just had to give $20 billion to Ford. Turns out even- Well, here's, here's the money. thing. These people are historically yeah. illiterate. You know, for you, you got to look at an EV and look at the look at the people that are in the United Auto Workers, all the different high-paying jobs that they do. All those jobs are going to go away. You don't need them in an electric vehicle. An right. electric vehicle doesn't have a hydraulic transmission. You know, it doesn't have an engine. It doesn't have oil. I mean, it may be a little bit of a motor oil, but not engine oil. Right. It's You're out of work. You know, you made drive shafts. Well, you used to make drive shafts. We don't need those anymore. You know, you know it, uh, they're stupid. Stephen King says something here. Turn Trump loose. And we the we the people, the true patriots, will stand behind him. Um, while while uh, the last the last year that Trump was in office, 
the co-host that I had, I would always say to them, I was like, you know, it's okay to go to a rally. It's okay to try to be the first or second one to retweet President Trump or share his post on social media. But he doesn't need that. He needs you to go start knocking on doors. He needs you in the community. He needs you to try to increase Trump's army, Trump's um, the MAGA base. You know, that's that's how I felt. I don't think I don't think that we should. I, I, I never thought we should put him out there in front and let him do it by himself. We all need to do it. He is the spokesperson for the silent majority. But the silent majority should be fighting beside him, not behind him, beside him. So um, it used to piss me off that, uh, the you know, he used to say, look at all these people. All these people at these rallies, oh, there's no way that he can lose. I was like, everybody, everybody, everybody that go to rallies don't vote. They go for the spectacle. They go for the beautifulness. Hey, I got a shirt. I was at the Trump rally. Look, see, look, I was at the Trump rally. I was here. Some of them just go from state to state. Boom, 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 boom. Caravans, like, like, like. Blacks uh, for Trump. <laughs> the, everywhere. I mean, same they just. Dude, they, same dude. You know, they just <laughs> stop at Kentucky Fried Chicken on the way or, or <laughs> stop at IHOP on the way, but. They on to the next city. The thing is, he you just can't put him in there and and then just sit back and watch. You you have to be okay, fine. We got him in there. Hard work. Yes, yes, we got him in there. Now he's 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 there. Now we have to help him get this message out because I tell you before before we go to break. It, it used to piss me off every time that they went on break, especially that um, time that he signed that tax, the, um, the Trump tax cuts. Not one of those Republicans went home before Christmas, I mean, during the Christmas uh, break, talked about Trump's tax cuts. He signed those tax cuts right, um, right before Christmas, right before Christmas vacation. And I got her on the show. I was like, if I was a Republican, I would take the next two weeks or however it was before they get back on the Congress. I would be on the radio show. I would ask for airtime on um, the local TV stations. I would be like, the um, the Trump tax cuts are coming. It's going to help this. It's going to help that. It's going to do it. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. They were thinking, okay, well, we'll just let him do it. What What happens is if we don't help, Trump in that in the style that I'm saying that gives the Democrats that opportunity or that space to come and offset or make up their um the uh, on their narratives and lies they lied about the tax cut oh it's just going to the uh, top one percent the, the same thing that they do all the time it's the same thing that they do all the time in any economic I am not I am not I am not an economist but I do know this: if you raise taxes on these companies, they're gonna put it right back on us. I know that. I'm not. Believe me, I ain't. I ain't that. There's nothing Nancy Pelosi or or um, Steny Hoyer or anybody up there can tell me that they're gonna tax all these companies and it's not gonna affect us on the ground. They made, a, they made a fool out of Mitt Romney for telling the truth, or maybe it wasn't Mitt Romney, but whoever said that corporations are people, because they are. He said that there ain't a, there ain't a taxpayer out there named corporation. <laughs> That's people paying that. It's coming out of profits, and it's getting put right back on the price tag, as the corporate world master would know. I, I was going to say these people that think that corporations aren't going to do whatever they can to increase their bottom line are pretty stupid. Like, oh, yeah. it, it, and that's not a crime, right? No, no, it's not. It's not. It's not. Um, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have more. Um, I want to still talking about this immigration thing because it makes me sick to my stomach 
that all these people, I mean, it's, it's a freaking country. It's, I mean, it's almost like two countries are, are forging themselves and then coming over here. And that, that, that was the Venezuelan that put that flag, right? Yes. Yep. But didn't he give cover to 472 Venezuelans? Yes. Yes. Wow. Wow. Let's catch it on the flip side. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's like, we're going to give y'all money. We're going we gonna to take care of y'all. Alejandro, my joker. <laughs> and, and, how do they, and how do they repay us or re repay him? I'm going to one side. We win. We got invaded. We yep. got invaded. We got invaded. And they didn't even have rifles. They didn't. No, they didn't. They had they had nasty um 70 old stinky t-shirts and and, and, uh, and all these on the said, left thing. <laughs> somebody said it was Trump. He said they all got cell phones. Everyone, yeah. and I'm thinking, where we do they mail the bill to? Right. Yeah. yeah. Somebody's yep. buying them phones, and it ain't them. Nope. Because how would they pay it? This is such a scam, man. No vaccinations, no nothing, man. No. Really, kids are going to start dying of TB, man. Can't here with a flag. You know where they're going? They're going to they're going to Minnesota. Send them to Minneapolis. Send them to New York. <laughs> send them to Chicago. Send them to L.A. Send them to, to all these cities where all these idiots. Are are sitting there shouting at people that they should have them. New York City, go send them bang. to Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills, send them some more to the Hamptons. Martha's Vineyard. Sure, Let's send, they got all kinds of problems. Send them down there. to Sea Island, Georgia. How about that? Send yeah. them to Sea Island, Georgia, and say, "Where's Where's Governor Kemp?" Yep. Oh, Georgia gonna play like that. That that might bring back the ghost of. <laughs> that might bring back the ghost of the past on that one. Giddy up. Let's go, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the Wing Your Free Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you've been watching the Wing Your Free Podcast here on Red Wars Media. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we got more from J-Rod from Muslim Soda. Got HB Radio Guy, Hutch Bailey Jr., the Godfather of Conservative Radio, and Wayne Dupree here. And, all, and um, during the break, y'all take a few seconds. Like, comment, and share. Like, comment, and share. Um, and follow. Follow, subscribe. For those that are on um, Twitter, yeah, I'm going to call it Twitter until I die. Um, for all those that are on Twitter, Hit um subscribe. Subscribe. Help us help us help us take care of the show because um we're gonna need you next year. I'm I'm gonna tell you right now, we're gonna need you because we're going to the GOP convention. So we're gonna need you. That's that's just straight up. Um and that and that's in Wisconsin. So uh that's the that's the way we're gonna do that. Okay. Attention Americans, breaking news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. Take action now. The Federal Reserve phase deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard. Your hard-earned assets are in jeopardy. But there's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Reach out to American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Visit protectfrombiden.com. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Be smart. Don't let Biden force you into using the government government's new digital dollar. Visit protectfrombiden.com to get your free guide and get started. Again, that's protectfrombiden.com.
When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe cusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, thanks America! If you um, have an American Express card, get rid of it. Um, Just saying, I mean... You know, if uh, if that's you know if that's what you want to do, um, get rid of it. You you don't need American Express. There the other um, places out there. I hate I I hate American Express. Uh, for years I for years I, for years I've tried to get one, and um, they won't give me one. So there you go. Um, welcome back. Hutch Baylor Jr., J. Rob, myself here on Red Voice Media. We were talking about Jay. We were talking about the um, illegal immigration. What do you get? What do you have on that? Well, the numbers are truly terrifying if you look at it. I mean, rough estimates of just border encounters people they've ran into is three million. Just this weekend, they had one day with eleven thousand people. I mean, Hutch said it on the show. Last week, they brought in more people than Pittsburgh last month. Uh, It's truly shocking. And now you see this media propaganda campaign, which watch out for this. And we started seeing this in the last few days. You see the razor wire in Texas and you see these immigrants taking pictures of sending their children under the under the razor wire. I saw one today where they put cardboard on to lift it up. Folks, this is an invasion. And you can't have a country if you don't have a border, if you don't vet who's coming in, if you don't limit what you give people for public assistance. You can't just let unlimited people in. And these folks are not, they are not fleeing persecution. They've they've got a shitty country that has a bad economic situation by how it's run. And they're trying to bring that to us what do you think venezuela is it's a communist country right venezuela what was it 10 years ago china yeah it was one of the model nations and all these people coming in they they, like make take a citizenship test you know and you can't have people come in illegally and get in the truck well get in the truck right you know what i mean because you got to have three things to have a country language borders and culture Yep. And I'm telling you, they're not speaking English, folks. Right. They don't have the same culture as we have. They're going to make soccer the national sport. <laughs> you know, and, and, and border speaks for itself. It, here's the thing that I'm listening to both of y'all, and um, I'm extracting what I'm getting ready to say from what y'all just said. Ladies and gentlemen, if you come from a communist country, and that's and that's what you grew up with, that's all you know. That's all you know. That's your culture. You ain't coming over. You're not coming to America with a change culture overnight. You, you ain't doing it. No, you're coming to bring Venezuela here. Yes, right. exactly. Just like the Muslims. Every that's like why Muslims. you bring your damn flag is because you want to make America Venezuela. There you go. There you go. And that's why, honestly, I don't know. Maybe I dreamt it or, you know, with my numerous get ups at, at night. But um, the border needs to be closed right now. All the borders. Close it. Close it. Close South, it. north, east, and west. That's right. Close it. One Close guns it. on the beach, man. Yep, exactly. Nobody comes in. Nobody goes out. Well, actually, if you want to go out, you can go out. Nobody comes in. 
for at least uh, a, um, a year. Ten years. Yeah, okay. Ten years. We'll, we'll revisit right. it in ten years. And everybody here illegally, President Trump hit it right. Send them home. You have to. Go home. Yeah. And They're not going to leave by themselves. No. And, and here's the sad reality. There are people in the world that need asylum. But yes. you don't need asylum if your country just sucks. Right. Right. You, if you need asylum, you go to Canada. Right. But but I mean, if if there are people that need asylum, because, you know, there's some countries in Africa that there's some really bad stuff going on with war and that kind of thing. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is, if you want to extend asylum, those are the people that you could look at and go, okay, yeah, this is really bad. They're... You know, South Africa, they're rounding up the the farmers, the white guys. And like, hey, if those people come, I might be interested. But somebody who says Venezuela sucks and and our country's broke, like, sorry, go fix your country. Uh, you know, the way I look I at that, too. I don't want nobody in here. Right. Well, when, when we have a balanced budget. Right. When oh. we don't have $30 trillion in debt, yeah. then we can start worrying about other people's problems. Yeah. Because nobody has ever in the history of the United States of America right. bailed us out. Right. Well, and Hutch brings up an excellent point. You know, if you're on a plane, they always say secure your mask first, right? Because you can't help anybody if, you know, an emergency happens and the auction's out. And in America, as much as the good side of us want to say, you know, send us all these folks and we'll help them, you just can't afford it. I mean... No. We, we are arguing right now over a budget where we take in $4 trillion in tax revenue and they want to spend $6 trillion. And there's only 20 people. And with, there's only with, two. Right. That, that, that are freaking on the money. The rest of them are all crooks. Right. But, I mean, think about that. Let's <laughs> say you make sixty grand a year and you want to spend eighty grand a year. And, and, and you're having this argument with your wife or your husband. Like, no, we really can't spend like we have eighty grand. Cause we only have 60 grand and, and they're looking at you like, are you kidding me? What are you racist? What are you an idiot? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it's beyond. I want to take, I want to take just a few seconds because I want to see what my boys say about this video that I'm getting ready to show you. Um, Larry Elder oh. <laughs> is, uh, is not Larry Elder going. <laughs> Larry Elder is not going to be on the, the base stage again tonight. I don't know why, but um, he's not going to be on anybody. So, really, really factor, ladies and gentlemen. Really <laughs> so I love Larry Elder. I... He was, he was, uh, he was on a radio show yesterday on a podcast, an urban podcast, and they wanted to talk to him about father fatherlessness homes. One of the main stables of his campaign. Now I I'm going to play this. I want to see what y'all have to say and then I'm going to tell you what some of the people on Instagram and where I posted this. I'm going to tell you what they say. But let me let me um Demic in the black community of fatherlessness. What have you done to combat fatherlessness in the black community? Okay, so you're accepting that we have an issue with fatherlessness in the black community. You're accepting that, I assume. I, I'm no, not. not. You said okay. that. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, that. I didn't, I didn't think so. So, so you're you're not accepting it, and you're asking me, what am I doing about something? That you well, don't no, accept? no. You're you're my Larry, is, answer the my, damn my question is clear as day. <laughs> is that do you have you not done anything to combat fatherlessness? You are, you, are, you 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 just now acknowledged in your opinion that what I just now said wow. isn't even a problem. Larry, please answer. What have you done to combat fatherlessness? I'm waiting for Rachel to answer my question. Then I'll respond. I've already answered that question. So, so you want me to respond to a problem? To no, answer no, Larry. It's problem. your campaign, Larry. Larry, this is your campaign. Your campaign is about fatherlessness. I'm giving you the floor to talk about how you have combat fatherlessness because you say it is such an issue in this country and you don't want to answer the question. I'm happy to answer the question, provided that you acknowledge that there is a problem. Uh, Larry, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Now, um, y'all heard y'all heard the last thing. What do y'all think about that exchange? I don't really care. 
I mean, I was looking at it and I care about the issue, um, but I don't know why Larry Elder would waste his time on a show like that hmm. because he's not going to change their mind. It's, you could hear it. You know, they're not even, they're, they're just a, they're just a couple minutes North of civil, hmm. you know, when they're dealing with the president, I mean, all right, he's low, low energy presidential candidate, but <laughs> you know, he's out there. I mean, it, why would you invite somebody on your show and ambush him? I was never into that. How about you, Jay? I will say I like Larry Elder. I mean, he's never going to be president and he does goofy endorsements, but I think a lot of the issues Larry Elder speaks about are really important. And I don't know why he'd waste his time on those shows like that, that are just going to, going to try to slam him and ambush him. Like they should have had a discussion. He was right. They should have had a discussion. Is this a problem or not? And I think in the black community, what they've done to destroy the families has been a root cause for what what happened. I mean, in in these urban neighborhoods, you create economic systems where you get more money for dad to be gone than there. You throw abortion clinics in those neighborhoods and and then you wonder why those neighborhoods decay, you know, and they do it in other poor white neighborhoods, too. But um, I mean, it's the same thing. So. Yeah, but I, I don't know why he'd waste his time on that show other than they're the only one that would have him on. Although, have him on the Wayne Dupree show. I'd no. love to have him on the no. So, um, <laughs> here, here, here's my take, ladies and gentlemen. Larry should answer the damn question. You run for president, answer the question. What have you done as a... I mean, the discussion was there. They wanted to hear examples of what the man had done to combat father, fatherlessness in the black community. If I was running, I would have said, I did this, I did that, I created this, I did that, I went here, I did this. Now, because now you are giving credence to your one of your main uh, legs uh, of your campaign. Now, me, I always believe that uh, if you're invited, I'm I'm going to go. I'm going to go because somebody's going to hear me. You know, I, I don't see anything as a lost cause except for a KKK meeting. I don't see anything as a lost cause for me to go and have a conversation. No, a lot of people might not hear it. Somebody will. And then somebody is going to change over. But for me, I was like, and I've said this on the show before. There are many people on our side that have built their bones in front of a mic. They don't go into the community. They don't do anything. They don't talk to anybody. They they have all Ben Shapiro is one of them. They 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 have all the solutions in front of a mic. I used to get mad at Ben Shapiro when I came over to the, I, when I left the Democrat party, because he used to give all those black statistics all the time. I was like, how, how does he know? And they're in books. Well, he, he reads books. He's a bookworm, but he doesn't, but he doesn't go into, I never, I never, I mean, of, of all the videos and stuff that you see him, I don't see Ben Shapiro walking through um, the hood, asking people questions and stuff. I don't see that. And I've never seen Larry do that. But people think just because you are of a certain color, you know what's going on within the black community. If it was me, I would answer the question. You know why? Because I am that confident in what I have done to help. And that's what I want the country to do. I want the country to do what I've done. He he acted like he acted like he was afraid. He was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm waiting for her to answer the question. I think what he, I think what he's doing, if you look at his previous appearance on Charlemagne's show, and you look at that, it looks to me like he's trying to discredit these people with these shows. Because you know, you say that you would go for anything except the KKK rally. Mm. From me looking, that's not much different on the other side. If you've got people that there are there, and they're talking about something that. Uh, I, I mean, how can you deny the problem? How well, can you deny that problem? Them, it's right for them. Me. Right, but for them, they were trying to hear what he, uh, what he, examples 
yeah. of what would help fix Father you, Jones. Oh, I mean, and, I got and answers what he's for that. Done. <laughs> right, right. I mean, and and all of us have an answer for that. He didn't want to give an answer. Incendify marriage. Yeah, I, I was going to say, if, don't put me in the uncomfortable position of defending Larry Elder's approach, but I've seen him use this approach on shows, and what he on tries shows. to do right. is steer the conversation into let's all let's all accept that this is a root cause problem. And so he tries to steer the conversation into until the community accepts that this is a root cause problem, then we can talk about how we're going to solve it. And whether that's an effective approach or not, I don't think that's an effective approach for a political campaign because he he makes them look stupid. He should have. Now, if you're just sitting there as two dudes having a conversation and he's on a long form show like Joe Rogan and he says, well, let's talk about this. Is this really a problem? And then you change minds where people go, God, I guess it is a bigger problem than I thought. But well, I mean, for a and, political and, that, and that's what I thought that was going to lead to. I honestly, I really thought that he was going to break down toward the end and say, okay, well, this is what I've done. He played with it. Well, he didn't play with it. He punted it. I was like, dude, right. just tell him, just, just tell him what, what, I mean, how to fix fatherless homes. Um, I've seen a few other black conservatives go on places like that and 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 knock it out of the park. Not, I mean, we marriage. We need to educate our children right. We need to. And, and the thing is, rich, you, know you don't is, you don't isolate it to the black community, right? Because it's not just true. the black community's fault. The that black is community is the worst in yeah, the country, but every other demographic is is marked too. Yeah, that's yeah, true, I mean. You know? It That's started right. in those communities in the urban and the government cities. did it. Right. And the government, the Democrat did Party, did it. And, and now you know it's what, spreading to it, other communities. You know, um, where we see black men on the streets are or running behind Donald Trump right now. But even Donald Trump even said on the program here that um, you know the black women will hopefully come around and stuff. And the base of the black women usually vote for the Democrat Party. From statistics, the they really hold the Democrat Party up. Do you know why? It's because of what I mean, because of what seeds the Democrat Party laid in the 50s, 60s, and early 70s yeah. with the welfare situation. That's why they, I mean, they uh money that they gave money per child. They gave money if you didn't um, go for higher education. Think about that. Came and inspected your home. He came and inspected your home, and if they saw something from a man, you wouldn't get no more money. Think Big about old that. new TV or something like that. They inventory. People, people you respond it? to financial incentives, and when you incentivize oh. dads not to be in the home. That's why that. Larry Elder, now that I'm thinking about it, Larry Elder could have made a whole lot more money if he'd have sat there and explained to the audience that the easiest way to get out of poverty is not the government, it's to get married before you have kids. Yep. That is a number one indicator of whether or not you're going to be broke or not the rest of your life. And well, if and if he would have said, when I speak to young boys and girls in the community, when I go there, that's what I tell them. That's what I tell them. I try to... Pro- you know, just, just, I mean, dude, you're running for president. You're not running for um, dog catcher. You're running for president. And if there's one thing, just like Jay said earlier, if there's one thing that some, for the most part, when we're watching the debate, and y'all can see this tonight, if you watch the debate tonight, but if there's one thing that we hate is when somebody gets up there and half asses an answer, because then the next day is like, well, that sounded good, but they didn't tell you how we're going to do it. Right. They didn't give us any solution. They just gave the fiscal responsibility. Yeah. Or, 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 or this. Go to my website and, not, and tell me what you what you're well, going to do. It's, it's too bad because Larry Elder, like he has that canned response where there's three indicators of if you're going to be successful in those communities. Do you wait to have children until you're married? Do you get and hold a job? And do you avoid drugs and alcohol? If you do those three things, you're one generation away from being out of poverty. And that's true. 
It is it true. Is. It is. You look at the common denominator in the penitentiary. It's yep. no dad. Right. Yep. But see, when I was answering people on Instagram and stuff, y'all are doing exactly what I said that I would do. Y'all are coming with solutions. Yep. <laughs> okay. Y'all are coming with solutions about what y'all would do, right? No issue. He had an issue. He had an issue with just because that was his mission. I think. Well, I was gonna say, like that that spiel I gave about the three things, that's his spiel. Like if you watch Larry Elder, yeah, that's I, what he says. Yeah, I heard of that before I even knew who Larry Elder was. Right. <laughs> that's a real deal. It's real, man. I mean, it's it yeah. is. It was a I proved a it to myself. Day. But yeah, I mean, again, there are people in our on our side that are um, Stephen Crowder that um that get in front of the mic war tell us exactly what to do and they and they haven't done it. You know, um <laughs> before we go to Rick, Kevin McCarthy had to call um had to pull back his uh his uh request for Menendez to resign. Why? I know he was passing a bunch of money out. Be because um, he he hasn't. I mean, because he didn't tell Santos to resign. So he's pulling. I mean, so he has. He, he's pulling back his call for Menendez to resign because he didn't tell Santos to resign. He he's allowing Santos to stay in, and and and. And as for me, I, I I could tell Menendez, you don't need to be in office because Santos don't need, need to be in office. I can call out anybody. I don't care. I ain't going to be no, I, well, you know, you know. It's a little difference between the charges. Oh, no. Menendez foreign is relations just a distraction, committee. guys. He it's had just a distraction. He has been he, corrupt he had for money down over there in a decade. They dropped the Menendez bomb right Forging, now. Forging checks. Huh? Forging checks. Santos forging checks. Um, but that's what I'm talking about. It's like they're they're uh he's pulling back because he doesn't want to be seen as a hypocrite. From what uh McCarthy the right up seen as a hypocrite. I, I know, right? Crazy, right? <laughs> but that I'm but a Democrat, the speaker of the house for the Republicans. <laughs> but then you have um people like Fester saying Fester Fetterman saying that um Menendez Tony needs Soprano. to step down. Said he's Tony Soprano. <laughs> <laughs> right now, right now, you literally have Democrats saying that that um get the heat off of Joe. Get Menendez, Menendez out. needs to step down, which is weird because you usually don't see that, right? You you you, you usually don't see that. We've been calling for it, we've been saying. What the other side needs to do, they need to call out their side. And well, guess what? They're doing it for with Menendez. And Menendez is like, I ain't going anywhere. I ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Not like guilty. Even, hey, even the, Coy, the Menendez thing, I have even Cory Booker came out and said that he needs to, to get out. That's here's, crazy. Here's my the glorious the mayor Menendez of Newark. Thing, though. Yeah, man. I haven't wrote an article on our website. I haven't talked about it on social media. I really don't care. This guy's been in Congress. We've known he's corrupt for 15 years. And if you don't think that there was some reason why in this time with everything going on, they're going to drop that on. I don't know what Menendez did to piss him off, but it, this is not breaking news that Menendez <laughs> is corrupt. Menendez didn't piss him off. They're just trying to get Trump out of or uh, Biden out of the light. Right. You know, Menendez just got Menendez. He was his big problem was he was too out in the open with it. It was right. too he easy. Pissed, he pissed he pissed somebody off. He took somebody's 16 year old girlfriend. Maybe and, that too. <laughs> and some but and, this ain't about Menendez. No. No, no, no. This is about how do you get people talking about, oh, look, Democrats are standing up to get rid of the corruption. Yeah. Instead of as Joe Biden, they're going to take him out too, man. Did you uh, see you know, that President Trump, man, stay inside for a few months? Did you say that Chinese bill, like, or or like they had the money order and it went to his house? Yeah, to his house. address. To his address. 
this guy's nailed, man. <laughs> it's kind of fun watching him turn on him. And and I'm sure there's some meat like, hey, Joe, have you had enough? Are you going to tap out yet? And he's like, no, no, no. You know, Jill won't let him. And no, he's like, won't. no, how do you stay in there? It's it's great. It, it's, it is. It's nasty. It's weird. Yeah. I mean, These are not good people. They are not no, good they're people. Not. They're not. They're not. Um, okay. So <clears throat> we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to have more here on the Wayne Dupree show. Jason Robinson, uh, the Godfather of Conservative Radio, Ms. Sasha Bailey Jr., Wayne Dupree here on Red Voice Media Network. Remember, you can watch us on Apple TV. You can also watch us on. Um, I don't know whether y'all have. Um, the the fire stick. Y'all had y'all had I, got Roku. I, I got Roku's. You got Roku? I got Apple TV um and Amazon Prime. I used to have a fire stick. I just canceled uh, Amazon Prime. That sucker cost too much. Yeah, I'm about to cut yeah. I'm I'm about to get rid of it too because they say that you're gonna get a whole lot of free stuff, but all the stuff there has money. I mean <laughs> I keep getting these recurring payments on the I subscribed for A and E or something like that. And I've been paying for it for three years. I didn't even know I was. Dude, I'm seeing it's like you have a charge for Amazon Prime, but then you keep seeing these little charges. Yeah, for Amazon, Amazon, yeah. Amazon. I'm like, but our but I pay a year. Why y'all taking out something every couple of weeks? Got Amazon Prime, but I got to pay for every one of these series. That's a repeat yes. of something that was on TV ten years ago. Yeah, that, yes, that, sir. That's crazy. You're out. Amazon, you can kiss my. Is this right? This okay. Um, in a startling uh, description, the UN food chief warned the world with the words "knocking on famine's door." He called what we're facing a perfect storm of a perfect storm, and he's not alone. Barron's published that a food shortage could be coming even in the United States. Pharmacy at two, John Boyd, a fourth generation farmer, told Fox News that we are going to see some empty food shelves in the coming months. That's why getting survival food is more important now than ever. Create your own stockpile of the best selling for Patriots survival food kits. Now, it's not your ordinary food. Um, we're talking good for 25 years. Uh, super survival food is hand packed in a family owned facility um, in the United States of America and given jobs to over 200 Americans, which is very, very important. Uh, they have different delicious breakfasts and lunches and dinners. Um, you can make these meals in less than 20 minutes. Uh, all you have to do is add boiling water, uh, simmer and serve. Uh, now, right now, for the next few days, listeners of the Wayne Dupree podcast will get up to 10% their fir- on their first order at 4 by using the code name Wayne. Again, you will get 10%, actually 10% on your first order at Patriots.com by using the code name Wayne. Just go to 4 and use the code name Wayne to start your stockpile today. Don't get left behind, my friends. Don't get left behind. Survival food, baby. That's right. Fourpatriots.com. Listen, Hutch Bailey Jr. and Jason Robinson, Jr. Um, poll came out. We were, I mean, look, we make fun of the polls, y'all. We we don't follow the polls. Poll came out. Uh, who does the poll? CBS, you you go, yeah, yeah. Liberal poll. Seventy nine percent of Republicans in Iowa considering candidates other than Trump. Did you? <laughs> there was a story that also came out that said um, the desperate. donors, the donors seem to be going at, um, with Nikki Haley in uh, Good luck, New Hampshire. Man. Yeah, Chris Christie said that Donald Trump's feeling of invulnerability will evaporate when he wins New Hampshire. <laughs> I just got to say, Ron DeSantis better hope he wins Iowa because he has put so much money and energy. I mean, he has spent more time in Iowa than Florida in the past 90 days. And Florida notices. And Florida mm-hmm. notices. 
And I mean, if old boy don't win that, like Ed, that's going to be like he isn't spending time in other states. You know what I mean? I, I'm not going to call out anybody. I should, but I'm not going to. But okay. I wonder what's going to happen with some of these conservative people that took the 30 pieces of silver because their life's got to suck right now. Yeah. Laura, Loomer. they don't know what they're they don't know what they're talking about, folks. Stop. Laura moving. Loomer was talking about that this weekend. It sounds like they were going to go through some budget cuts with the DeSantis campaign. And <laughs> one of the places they were going to cut is their influencers. Yeah. And uh, yeah. It's, well, it's, I mean, it's, to, to, to even ha- say, to even claim that you have influencers. I mean, Donald Trump didn't even do that. That's but offensive it, language to me. Yeah, it, exactly. And <clears throat> For some people, you you well, for many people, you turn a whole lot of people off and you say, okay, I got these. In- okay, well, what makes them important or what makes them, uh, uh, what puts them out in front ahead of other people? And many of them don't even have followings like that. You know, Here, here's the thing. What you know, I got into this, I didn't get into this to be famous, I didn't either. I got into this because I felt about it and, and I had a comedy show and it was killing my comedy show whenever I'd get on here and be serious. <laughs> you know, so I was like, look, I like being serious better than funny. So I'm going to go do this. And, right. you know, I look at other people that are in it and they're not in it this for the same reason. Yeah. They went to journalism school or something like that. They're trying to be Jake Tapper. Yeah. yeah. And it, because I'm not trying to influence anybody. I mean, I would hope that you would listen to what I had to say and take heed to it or go do your own research or whatever. You know, I wouldn't mind you starting to think, but I'm not saying, Hey, I want you guys to go over here and get this blue shirt. Yep. You know, I'm not, you're not going to influence me. If if I say that when, when you mention an influencer, you're really cutting down the intelligence of the people on the other side of it. Right. In my yeah, opinion, I, I mean, well, I and, and I think here's the dirty secret people need to understand. And this is both on the right and on the left is, you know, the three of us have jobs. I mean, we're self-employed or whatnot, but we do things to make money. This <laughs> is not something we do to make money. This is something we and don't don't get us wrong. If you want to give us money, you want to subscribe. We would love to have the support. But if somebody comes to us and says, we want you to express this opinion and we are going to pay you for that, we will tell you to F off because we express our opinions on this show and we're not always right. We're, we're not always wrong. But many of the people that you see expressing opinions are paid and it's not always direct. It's not like, hey, I'm going to go hand you a check for $10,000 to go say this thing. It's mm. indirect. Hey, if you support our candidate, we'll give you, you know, this endorsement deal or whatnot. And, and I mean, that's, that's the truth. And I will say president Trump doesn't really do that. No, he don't. And if I did do that, it would be anything that I say to you, I might not always be right. And I say it, I, because I don't want to speak for everybody else. They can speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if you hear me saying something, I believe it. Yep. Right. I, right, whether yeah. somebody paid that's me or true. not, I believe it. Yep. Yep. Well, yeah, and that's I mean, what's funny. I don't know if you guys saw it on yesterday on Twitter, but they were reaching out to Twitter folks with a big enough audience, the Kevin McCarthy's, uh, somebody who's indirectly supported through Kevin McCarthy's thing, asking influencers to start tweeting in support of caving on the continuing resolution yeah and, i got that, that, that i got that like that, that was a thing there was you heard maria right that's an influencer maria Baratiromo. Right. that's an influencer right if you're gonna sit up there at blah blah.com and write all this thing and you think you're an influencer you're trying to pretend that you're sean hannity right and i think but, that's disgusting they're failures but i mean mm-hmm. think about that you've got kevin mccarthy reaching out to some dude yeah. on twitter with three hundred thousand followers saying hey I'm going to give you a couple grand. Will you tweet this? I mean, it's, it's awful. If you, if you look at that, Republicans. you, I'm sorry, but if you look at that interview with Gates and Barrett to Romo, Oh yeah. And, and, and you do, you look at some deep dive articles about that interview. You can see her on the phone in direct communication with somebody in McCarthy's office Yep. as she in real time, she's literally asking questions and responding to Gates by what's on her phone. She didn't know that stuff. What a fraud. 
yeah. Council on Foreign Relations fraud. Yeah, I mean, I've seen. I'm I, again. I've seen. Um, it's just that when I'm watching these people on TV now, what? Well, not now. It's been a while. I just, man, I just pull myself. I mean, I just distance myself from that type because I'm like, man, they ain't doing nothing but hurting the whole movement, the whole cause, the whole the whole Republican side with their greed and their reading. And yep. that's that's basically all they're doing is greed reading. And I mean, because again, if you watch that uh, Maria Bartomaroma interview with Gates, watching her basically blame Matt Gates. It's what they always do. Blame yep. him for what he was doing. And, uh, you know, God bless him for standing up and said, well, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if, if, um, if you're saying all this good stuff is happening, what tell is me, it? tell yep. me, tell me. And she couldn't, yep. I, I don't even think that she did for the rest of the interview. I, and then she punked at the end of the next day. So I think my mind's changing on this. Yeah. Right. Your mind ain't got nothing to do with it. It's what Paul Ryan told you to say. Oh, Paul, uh, Paul Ryan came out yesterday and um, basically said that uh, he, uh, his his disgust of uh, MAGA voters. <laughs> he said if Donald yeah, we're Trump disgusted gets elected, with you too. <laughs> he said if Donald Trump gets elected, uh, oh no, if Donald Trump wins the nomination, um, Republicans are going to lose the election, basically. Um, and he is frustrated with Trump followers. That is, that's Paul Ryan. That's Fox, that's Fox News. Yeah. Well, I got to say, and we've talked about it on the show, we've had Rich Barris on the show, if Trump is not the nominee, it is going to be a Mondale-Reagan loss for Republicans, only we're Mondale this time. That's yep, my opinion. You're right. No, you're definitely right. I, like I said, I hope the man stays safe. Yep. Yeah. I mean that too. That's not a joke. No, I mean they went after his business, yeah. and and you read that, and like I say, it's the most egregious. And I've read all these lawsuits, right? I've read all the stuff about all these cases, and I'm reading this one, and I'm like, I just want to puke. Like this shouldn't be allowed in America. This this attorney general and this judge should be thrown in prison. That they allow that to happen to anybody, it's ridiculous. Let me let me ask you both a question. Do you think if Donald say Donald Trump say um say Donald Trump wasn't running and uh, Ron DeSantis okay Ugh. Ugh. Ron DeSantis was leading the nomination right now. Do you think Biden would stay in? No. Um. I don't or, know. Or would he hand it off to somebody else if it was Ron DeSantis? Maybe. That's I mean, because he's dead. He's what dead man walking. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. I mean, you know, I think, I think as long as Trump Trump stays in, Biden stays in. And you know, I did say I think it's I think it's going to be a halfway thing for me. You asked a question yesterday. I think it was yesterday. About um, when is Biden going to? I think it's going to be halfway. I I, I think that um, halfway in, something's going to happen to him, or he's going to say the wrong thing in front of a mic. That's thick. That's thick, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you bought it. No, uh, listeners sent it to me. This thing's 700 <laughs> pages long, <laughs> and it's got pictures. <laughs> Lots of pictures you don't want to see. <laughs> that girl's not 18, Hutch. Oh, Just so yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, is you know, I feel that when they get to the the Democratic convention, I think that there are gonna be a couple of names up there and they're gonna I mean and I've seen this process happen before. And honestly, if you are a sucker for politics, you kind of like this process because when people get up there, I'm sorry it happened in Virginia. The candidates get up there and tell you why they that they want to be uh, 
the nominee. So then they go through a round of votes with the uh, with the people that are on the floor. They go through a round of votes. And it might be five or six people that are up there. But you start dwindling it down until you get a certain percent up, and then that person becomes the nominee for the thing. Again, I've seen it in – I think we went in there around 10 o'clock. It was me and Leisha. Uh, we went to the Virginia GOP um, convention. And I think we went in there about 10 in the morning. And we didn't get out there till about 1 the next morning because Damn. of how the nomination was going for um, for governor. And I was like, wow, this is, this is sweet. Because you see how the loser – or the person who thought that they might lose, they would go over, they would cross the arena to go over to the box where the other person was so that they could work <laughs> out deals and then they go right back down. And then there, I mean, it was, it was people, I mean, it, it, it was like a freaking circus carnival type. And you're like, oh my God. And, and then the third, the people in third place or fourth place, their groups are marching on the floor with the flags in the air. I like, man, this is crazy. <laughs> it's like, wow, this is this. Does this happen all the time like this? And well, and it doesn't. But that's politics, you know. It's I mean, the majority basically. Uh, it's all corrupt too. It is too, right? I mean, yeah. again, you're going over to them and you're making the um. um I'm going to vote for that bill for my company, man. Exactly yeah. right. I'll right. vote for him. Yep, 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 yep. That's how it works. Well, that's, that's why, that. like, the caucusing in Iowa, one of my friends that lives down there is attends him. And I, I haven't had the pleasure of going, but he's like, hey, you show up in the fire hall, <clears throat> and, and then you have all these, like, everybody's got their picnic tables. And it's like, that's the, you know, the last time that was the Cruz one, that was the Trump one, that was the, this mm -hmm. one, that one. And then people go to their little corners, and then if you realize your guy's going to lose, you can like, okay, screw it. I'm out of here. Or you can stay and decide if you want to go join another group of picnic tables. Mm -hmm. And then it's like <laughs> musical chairs yep. while all these people are doing it. It's uh, it, it's pretty funny. I don't know if that's accurate, but I've heard that from, from somebody that lives down there. So I um, even, even watching the caucus on C-SPAN because C-SPAN started uh, televising the caucus a couple of years ago. So, you know, you're sitting up there and you, and you got your popcorn and stuff and you're watching them and um, you see all these hands go up and, and hand and it, it, it when's it, the primary it, start November? Or? For what? January, Democrats? January uh, February. Yeah. January, February. Yeah. Yeah. January. The first one is uh Democrats in South Carolina, South Carolina. Yep. And that's why I said, I think Joe will last until the middle because I don't think he's, I think he's going to go down there and they want to put y'all, <coughs> they want to put y'all back in chains. Joe Biden wins South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the Tarzan movies with the blow guns, the blow dark guns. Yeah. 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 Joe Biden would be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> So January, we've got Republican caucuses. February, uh, South Carolina, Nevada are the Democrat ones. Uh, South Carolina. Uh, wait, 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 wait. You say January, Republican have caucuses. Uh, the first caucus is January 15th, Iowa Republican caucus. Okay, so no uh, Democrat. Remember, they moved the Democrat one. Right. So in February 3rd, the South Carolina Democrat primary, and then Nevada is on the 6th, and then Ooh. on the Democrat Ooh. side, Michigan is the 27th. For Republicans, it is February 8th is Nevada, February 24th is the Republican. I thought and they did this on the same day. They no. usually did, and not now. Democrats changed it all. I thought that was just the one, just the Iowa, and the people in Iowa were going to vote anyway. No, yeah, they, I mean, it's uh, they changed it all. And then you got in early March, you've got Super Tuesday, which you know, largely things will be done by then. When do Democrats have Iowa? 
Uh, let me look. They change it, but I think I think Hutch is right. I was uh, pissed off, and they're they're threatening to do it at the same time. It's like the only thing they got in life. Right. Yeah, let me look for Iowa. Yeah, I don't see it jumping out at me on this list. It's do y'all remember it being in January to start because um, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> What that's all about? What is that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let me get a transmitter in the audience. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> oh, I can't even grab it. I wanted to grab it to see what the hell that was. <laughs> From oh. Alina Jadawinga Jadawinga Walakaska. Patrice Nimini, dude, Baleggio, Domingo, Budun, Budun, whatever. Okay, so. I will say it looks like I can't, I didn't see a resolution. I was looking up the Iowa thing. It looks like they're still fighting and they're threatening to do it on the same day as a Republican one. In January. Yeah, but it yeah. sounds like it's undecided. Somebody, a listener might have more information. See, what I don't get is if the. If the Iowa caucus is or in January, isn't it cold about that time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and usually the caucuses start like March or April. They moved all the way back to January. I don't remember. That's why I asked. I couldn't. Gosh, remember. No, I'm man, pretty sure it's usually around January. And to answer the question, why no, Iowa is this... because you know I'm... they're doing all that cooking. I mean. All the standing on the haystacks and stuff and everything. State fairs. Yeah, you don't you don't do that in January. That I mean, it's cold in Middle America for that. Oh yeah, can confirm. Wow. Okay. Well, whatever. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Damn. Damn. Y'all better not screw this up. Y'all better not screw this up. You're really an idiot. Sorry for your delusions. What, what's up, Dana? <laughs> I don't know if that's directed to us. Or oh, okay, to okay. Them. But if it is, I think Dana's been chatting along with us, and uh, God love her for seeing for the whole episode. Yeah, Maybe thank you, Dana. Not. Yeah. Yeah. You're really an idiot. That's a that's a way of putting it. What, what percentage, what's the percentage of people in America that hated President Trump? I don't know. 50. I don't know what's there to hate. Success? Stopping stopping their agenda. Stopping their agenda in its tracks. That's what. Waking everybody up. Basically. Yeah, that's the worst thing President Trump did to the establishment is he showed that it exists. And shocked me. It shocked a lot of us, and and that's what sat on the left. They they are more comfortable realize, thinking that President Trump is Hitler than they are realizing that their government's corrupt. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what it comes down to. Like, they're celebrating Trump getting these charges because Trump's Hitler instead of saying these charges are really corrupt charges. Yeah. No yeah. American should be getting those charges this last no. round. Right. Jason, give me some last thoughts. Well, folks... I'm going to take one for the team. I'm going to watch that debate tonight just because <laughs> just because I like comedy, just because I want to see him do it. Uh, and, 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 and my other <laughs> thought for the day is I can't wait till Ron DeSantis buys a gun. You know, it's coming, you know, after Trump was in the gun club and <clears> there's going to be some Ron DeSantis at a shooting range and I'm, I'm just here for it. So I'll let you know how bad the debate was tomorrow. <laughs> You know, I said at the beginning of the show, our cities are going down. Uh, Target, Target uh, is going to close nine stores, Sorry. but only in four states. One in New York and East Harlem, now around 125th Street, I guess. Three in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Three more in Portland, Oregon, and two in Seattle. So what do those cities all have in common? Oh, man. Good luck with that life there, Democrats. Yeah, that's... that's um. That's the Antifa lane right there, boy. Yes, you, it is. That that's real. That's like um and if you live there, you can blame it directly on them and the organized retail theft groups. Yeah. Yeah. That that that's um uh, what's that group or what's that place that they tried to Chaz. rename? 
Chaz or Chad yeah, or something Chad, like that. Chad, yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's wow. Good job, good job, folks. You shut it down. Congratulations. Now, nope. now y'all can go into the woods and make your own clothes. You know, well, well, y'all yeah, probably won't even. Know. I've always said this: they're part of Antifa until that bullet goes. 